Ah, hell no! What's up, my cool dudes? I'm Dylan, and welcome to my PLC team builder for week one of the Pokemon League Championships. Now, to for this week, guys, we are facing, as I said in the team builder, I mean, I've dropped analysis video, we are taking on Cameron and the Durham Bulu's week one. So, it's a very, it's a very scary draft, especially knowing Cameron. <laughs> But anyway, as you can see, Cameron, oh, you guys can't see it, but actually his drafts will be displayed on screen now, and he is rocking out with Tapu Bulu as his Z-Crystal Mon, then he's got Vaporeon, Alola Marowak, Alola Muck, Fortress, Wobbuffet, Pinsir, Garchomp, Jolteon, Braviary, and Kangaskhan. As you, as you can definitely see, it's a very scary draft. But okay, but what he, I definitely think he will bring the um, Tapu Bulu because let's face it, it's his strongest mon. He's going to bring the Vaporeon, he's going to bring them, I am swear he's going to bring Tapu, I think he's going to bring Tapu Bulu, Vaporeon, Al Alolan Muck, then we have the Fortress, and finally Garchomp and Jolty on. Just because he he needs Fortress and Vaporeon for some defense, then he can just rely on offense for the rest of the of his Pokemon. But anyway, let's as you can see, they, those ones have been added to the little layout down in the corner I have made. And uh, anyway, let's move on to my draft. I am bringing. I'll go through explain my draft and. It, why I'm bringing him. First of all, we have a Terra Slug here, the um, Gastrodon. We're rocking the Life Ball with Storm Drain, Scald, Earth Power, Ice Beam, and Recover. Rocking Max, it's Special Attack, Max uh, HP, and then Foreign Defense with a Modest Nature. I gave it the Life Ball because I did want to hit it real. I did want to hit really uh, hard. Honestly, though, with this set, I could give it the leftovers. I am not opposed to changing that up last minute. But, but anyway, if I do that, I'll let you know in the um, battle video. Recover just so I can get some HP back. I guess it, that way, okay, I guess I could put Toxic on it so I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Vaporeon. Let's face it, Vaporeon has water absorbed, this thing is Storm Drain, these two pretty much wall each other. So, having, I do want to put Toxic on, otherwise we're going to lose that Toxic Stall fight. Yeah, that might be a good idea. Oh wait, that's right, um, someone else carries the Toxic, so if I can get that off. I'll be on a va on to Vaporeon and it doesn't carry the Heal Bell, I'll be so happy. It is a possibility for it to carry Heal Bell because you can just greet it in um, Auras, give it Heal Bell, transfer it up. Which I've had to do with, I've had to transfer Bronzong up. We'll get that to that is. Skull just for, st Skull and Earth Power just for Stab, Earth Power hits the Marowak, the Mark. The and the jolt uh, and the Jolteon. Honestly, Jolteon is probably one of the biggest fears I have because if it's Choice Scarf, it outspeeds everything on my team unless I can get Cloister to plus two on with a Shell Smash. That is really what I'm scared of. Him having a Choice, him being a Choice Scarf Jolteon. <laughs> And we'll have no way to gauge that either. That's the sad thing. We'll have no way to gauge if he's indeed choice scarf. Okay, let's just move on to our next Pokemon. We have Taco Bell the Bronzong. Bronzong is rocking the Light Clay with the ability to levitate because I don't want to take an Earthquake from the Garchomp. I mean, the Heat Proof would be nice, but you've got so many defenses, I'd rather have the Ground type immunity. Considering that two of our Pokemon are weak on this week, uh, this week a week to ground, having that ground type immunity is going to hopefully come in very handy. Rocking Light Scream Reflect because of the Light Clay, because Light 
play boost the number of turns that screens are active for. Then we have Heavy Slam for offense, and finally Toxic. Now, I decided to go Heavy Slam instead of Gyro Ball because I cannot get a um, no spe zero speed IV um, Bronzong. I just, I just couldn't, no matter how much I tried, I just couldn't, so I'm just like, well, and Heavy Slam's gonna do more than Gyro Ball to the Tapu Bulu anyway, so it's not that big of a loss. He I think Heavy Slam was a free hit KO, uh, no, I mean Gyro Ball was a free hit KO on Tapu Bulu, but Gyro uh, Heavy Slam is indeed a two hit KO. So we can decay the Bulu faster and not have to worry about it for so long. Um, Bronzong actually walls a great deal of his team, including the Jolteon. He walls the Braviary, the Kang, the Pinsir. It doesn't wall the Muck and Marowak too well, but it walls pretty much everything else. So if he brings um, Mako Marowak, we're going to have to watch out for that. But good thing we have um, Terra Slug to deal with those two. It's not that bad of a deal. And then if he... I guess... Yeah. <laughs> hmm. okay. And Toxic, just as I said earlier, with Vaporeon's got a lot of health. Getting that Toxic up and hoping it doesn't have Heal Bell is going to be clutch. Getting a Toxic up on a Pokemon such as Garchomp wouldn't be that bad of an idea either, but if I can, I prefer to get a Will-O-Wisp off with a different Pokemon, just because Will-O-Wisp is going to, to cut Garchomp's attack in half. As well as Kang's, let's face it, Kang will be painful to deal with. Extremely painful. Anyway, moving on to Pokemon number 3, we have Sheldon the Cloister. I will- oh, crap. Um, I'll edit that out. Originally, Sheldon was going to be running the Shell- I mean, the, uh, White Herb. But I changed it up to Focus Sash last minute, because in case that Jolteon- Just in- if I have to leave it in on Jolteon and get the- after Shell Smash and then I have to force myself to Ice Shard, I will. It's not something I'd want to do, but if it has to be done, I will I will do it without any hesitation. So hopefully I'm not, I'm hoping not to leave it in until the Jolteon, I'm hoping to get it. Cameron seems down to a point where I can just bring in Sheldon, set up the Shell s Smash once or twice, and then just Icicle Spear or Rock Blast or... I might as well just go for Icicle Spear the whole time because most of Well, unless I'm hitting the Vaporeon or, or the Marowak. The rest of his, or maybe, the rest of his team pretty much get, won't be living. Maybe Fortress will have a bit easier time against Cloyster, but I don't see much of his, the rest of his team holding up so well. Because we're carrying Ice for priority. High school spear just so we can take advantage of the skill link and a rock blast as well. So we can hit the Marowak. We're just running max attack, max speed. Jolly nature, if we get up to plus two four with a shell smash, we will outspeed that jolty on if it is choice scarfed. I was originally intending to bring sticky webs, but I just couldn't find a spot for Lee Vanny or Smeagol on the team. Which is re really disappointed me. But anyway, let's move on to our next Pokemon. We have Jenny the Arcanine. Now, I did want to bring a bit of a bulky Arcanine this week, but I just, I just couldn't. I just could not bring a bulky Arcanine. I mean, an offensive Arcanine, no matter how much I tried, because you need, I need that Will O' Wisp, because Tapu Bulu, um. Garchomp, Braviary, Kangaskhan, four of his main physical threats right there don't get, will run rampant on my team if he brings them. So having a Willow Wisp there to check him is just going to be our best bet at defeating these Pokemon. We are rocking the leftovers so we can get some reliable recovery, a tiny bit of recovery back. We are rocking the Intimidate so we can get their so we can cut their attack in half, reducing the amount of damage they do. 
Intimidate can force switches, that's how broken it, that's how good it is. I'm really, we are rocking the Willow Wisp, we are rocking uh, Morning Sun, we are rocking Flare Blitz, and we are rocking Extreme Speed. Looking at the EV spread, max HP, max attack with an atom in nature, and four in defense, just making it that tiny bit, making Jenny here that tiny bit bulkier. Next up, we do have Sparky, our Lola Raichu. This is our Z move on right here. We have a Lola Raichu Z. We have Surge Surfer. We have Thunderbolt, Psychic. Nasty plot and focus blast because if we can, if we can take our Jolteon, we most do. Wait, do we? Um, where did that document go? Ah, uh, here we go. Yeah, if we get rid of Jolteon and Garchomp, our, uh, this Raichu can set up and run rampant through the rest of his team. That's how broken a Lola Raichu is because we have focus blast for the Kang, we have Thunderbolt to draw the um. Braviary, but only thing we have to worry about is that Alola Marowak having the, um, what's it called, what's it called, uh, Lightning Rod. That's what we have, to, that's the main thing we do have to worry about. It carries Lightning Rod, that's pretty much GG for Raichu, Raichu can't touch it otherwise. So, and I just can't think of anything else to put on. So hopefully we can get rid of that, so if we need um, Raichu to sweep, we can get rid of that Marowak if we really need to. But other than that, there's nothing at all that can stop the Alola Raichu barring Garchomp. So once Marowak and Garchomp, as I keep saying, once Marowak and Garchomp go down, we can just get rid of the rest of this team. It'll be slightly easier to deal with Garchomp if it is a defensive set because we can just bring in Cloyster. Shell Smash, he could try and Dragon Tail. Actually, yeah, Dragon Tail will force me out. But hey, we can get an Ice Girl cra Crash off, we may not even need to set up. But hopefully, we honestly, I'm really just wanting you to set up as a last resort if there is nothing else I can do to stop Cameron from running rampant on my team. <laughs> anyway, my last mod is Australian the Kamala. We are rocking an assault vest with this Kermala with the ability Kermatose. It can't be status at all. It can this guy cannot be status at all. So he is just a, a pretty much a free sweeper until someone KOs him. We are rocking the return because we'll have max happiness. We'll be rocking the rapid spin. So we can get rid of st potential stealth rocks or spikes. We'll be rocking the wood hammer so we can just Say no to Vaporeon, we can just get a wood, we can just get a bit of wood, hammer on the Vapor, hammer the Vaporeon and not have to deal with it anymore. And finally we are rocking U-turn, just for that bit of switch initiative. <sighs> Looking at the EV spread, we have max HP, max attack with the adamant nature, rocking an adamant nature. Before in special defense, just to make it a bit bulk. As you can see, guys, most of our team is a bulky sweepers, uh, bulky ones, which is kind of not a bad. It's a good thing, but it's also not the best ever because, well, once we if Garcha, if I have to deal with Jolteon, I mean, hey, if I could potentially have two mons left and plus a choice scarf Jolteon, and it locks itself into the wrong. Say it looks itself in the Shadow Ball to deal with Sparky, and I have these two left. I can just bring in Australian. He can't touch me, and that is GG. Unless he decides to hide the scarf. Which, I mean, hide the... Unless he's life form, which is a distinct possibility, which, I mean, would not be that terrible. But it would also mean he could switch out. Yeah. No, he's not doing... That Jolteon ain't doing much against Terra Slug anyway. So, at this stage, I think we are fine. And hopefully we do pull out a victory. But, okay, guys. If you enjoyed this PLC um, Team Builder for Week 1, please show your appreciation by smashing that like button down below. Let me know, guys, in the comment section below what you would have changed from on my team. And I will catch you guys when the battle begins.